Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Woki and I'm here with Zen. Hello. And welcome to the series in which me and Zenrai will watch every single Shonen Jump anime ever made through perpetuity per- till the end of time until the universe expands so far that it restarts the Big Bang and we're here at the end. Or if one of us croaks first, whichever happens, to be honest, whichever one of those happens first. Yeah, well, there's no way we're going to finish, so that's off the table. <laughs> no. Unless we, we have to find replacements for us after we're done. Someone to carry on yeah, our legacy. As we're dying. Yeah. Carry on the legacy of so, Shonen Archive. Yeah, we need someone to continue saying peak fiction after we're gone. <laughs> to continue the search for peak fiction after we're gone, Zed. That's the legacy we leave behind so that aliens can one day look back and say, like, damn, that uh, that arc of Gintama really did slam, huh? <laughs> That's gonna be our legacy. <laughs> but anyway, for this series, we're going through Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. We also go through Gintama, but we also do Yu-Gi-Oh! GX on the side. Because it's very easy to watch Yu-Gi-Oh! GX and talk about Yeah, it, it sure is. Especially season one. I, I Listen, listen. listen. <laughs> all right, I am so a let's... massive Yu-Gi-Oh! GX fan. As you all know, it's my favorite season of Yu-Gi-Oh! Even yep. more than the original. Yep. More than 5Ds. I love GX to death. You gotta, you gotta give it some rope in season one. <laughs> you gotta. Let me tell you right now, as a big lover of Yu-Gi-Oh, big fan of it, and I watched this back in the day, some of these episodes are some of the roughest. And I'll say that as some, a lot of GX fans shit on Duelist Kingdom. Appropriately so, because it doesn't follow any of the rules. But what I will say is that a lot of those episodes are entertaining as hell. Some of these episodes in GX, I don't. What was? What were they cooking? I don't know. I don't know what the, the yes, end of it it's, is. It's it's just literally like, what what was he cooking? Yes. What which is, what which is, was he cooking? It was um, especially yeah. this one. Yeah. Um, this one is really rough. Uh, this is a bad batch. Yes, this uh, I'm going to tell you right now. Okay, up, up front, out of these episodes, I only liked one of them, and that episode is still bad in the overall arc of the probably every. Yes, game. so there's so we're doing like 16 through 20. Yes, um, and we'll start with all episodes. of them are bad, yeah. but 18 and 19 have good moments. I will say I will give fair enough shake to that that yes that there are moments in 18 and 19. But overall, man, okay. So we're gonna <laughs> let's go through it, everyone. Shut an archive. <laughs> All right, we're gonna start with episode sixteen, which is called "The Dual Giant" or "King the Goblin Dual of Giant. the Dark Knight." Or d- d- the Japanese name is called "King Goblin of the Dark Knight." Too extreme yes. for over us here in English. It's called the Dual. Yeah, Giant. in the U.S., we can't handle that. So no, it's like the King Goblin. What are they goblin? These nuts? We'll never know. Back in the day, they four kids knew that there would be these nuts jokes, so they didn't release it. They refused to release a title with Goblin. Go um, ahead, Zen. So there is like a nighttime assassin on on campus. Um, not who's as cool attacking? As it yeah, it's not. <laughs> who is attacking Obelisk Blues? Um. And so Jaden is on the case, and um, it turns out they, they find this really big guy, and they're like, well, it's got to be you because um, you're big, <laughs> so that's all I need. <laughs> and it turns out it's not actually him. It's like a little small boy using a radio, mm-hmm. um, and Judai duels them. And then Judai's like, it's okay. I'm not gonna turn you in, and that's it. Yeah, that's a very basic summary of it. So, this episode, um, man, where do I fucking start with this one? Let me look at my notes again and look at through all this. Okay, I have one one word, which is something my brother said to me as he was watching me from the side looking at it, and he just said, uh, "Sparkman sweep." And I said, you're 100% correct. Because the end of this duel is the Spark Blaster 
uh, saving the day for Judai, basically, because he, in the only human in the history of the world who can FTK off of Sparkman and a Spark Blaster. Yes. Um... Because the, the, throughout it all, the goblins have been like, uh, th- th- he's been avoiding them trying to get into the fence and the Goblin King, which is, I forgot how bad a card Goblin King really was. Goblin King, if he was made modern, it, imagine King of Skull Servants, but bad. That's what Goblin King is. And it's only for fiend types. It gains a thousand for every face up fiend type on the field, not including itself. So if it's the only monster on the field, you have basically a zero attack wimp. So at the highest it can ever go is 4,000 attack. Um, Judai realizes it and is able to take it down. Uh, he uses Spark Blaster. He uses Warrior Returning Alive. He slaps him down with Thunder Giant. And then he also defusions them to kind of win the day here at the end. Um, it is a... Oh, it's, the episode is just not very good. Th- there is a little part of it. I, I kind of like the beginning premise of it, of Judai realizing he can sense dual energy, basically. <laughs> He's like... Uh, yeah, he can like, he, he can home in on dueling. Yeah, basically. He's like, I sense the spark of duel from the tiny one, but the big one, I sense nothing. He's like a Jedi. <laughs> He's like a dual Jedi. He can just kind of feel it out. <laughs> and... <laughs> And I also like the beginning duel where they show Obelisk Blue. I have to just give out about Obelisk Blue real quick. This uh, yellow, the um, raw yellow is fighting an Obelisk Blue, the little boy. Um, and he has a Marauding Captain on the field, and he has Mad Sword Beast. And J- uh, Judai looks and says, like, oh, all he needs to do is play Earthquake, and he's fine. He's going to win. And then basically the Obelisk Blue brown beats the other person into basically just saying, hey, attack me. Do it you won't attack and then he basically goes i attack and then it's revealed that the face down card that he had was reinforcements which is a trap card from the first set of Yu-Gi-Oh that gets 500 attack and i looked at that and said how the fuck are you an obelisk blue <laughs> yeah it's not great no. it's not great at this, um, no at this point in the game secret the secretsu armor was around i would believe Mirror Force was around. I would believe that a specifically someone from Opolis Blue would have any of those cards because they're rich. Reinforcements is like a starter card. It just didn't make any sense to me. And now I'm really under the assumption that no one in Opolis Blue actually knows how to duel. And that they're all basically pomp and circumstance. There's like two people that can duel. One of them is Asuka. The other one is Kaiser. And if you, I guess you could count... <laughs> uh, Manjome, but he's not there at the moment. But after his last showing, I don't want to count him as someone who knows how to duel. <laughs> so, it's really bad. And, yeah. There was a there was a little bit here where Masawa says, like, um, he's trying to cheer him up, and he's like, you're actually really good, dude. And then the guy's like, shut up, you can go to Obelisk Blue whenever the hell you want. You have no idea what the hell you're talking about. Which I thought was nice of someone. It, it's the only time someone's ever brought up, like, I guess, faction warfare inside there. Where the idea of, like, someone who... It's, like, so important to get to Obelisk Blue that someone... Getting pity from someone in raw yellow who's on purpose holding themselves back is kind of like, fuck off, guy. <laughs> I really don't want to hear it from you right yeah, now. Yeah, and it's funny because it's, like, um... It's something they don't do in an anime that often. Which is, um... Like, they, they would always treat it as, like, oh, he's being a really nice guy. But it's, like, actually, you're kind of being a cunt. <laughs> like yeah, you are. You, he's, <laughs> you're you're being an ass, like, you're condescending. Yeah. It's kind of like those, like, yeah, it, I like that moment. It was very much a, the idea of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX of being kind of, like, a more slice-of-life kind of feel. And I would definitely be in that in that kid's specific situation that this person was, like, trying to take pity. I would take it as taking pity on it, saying, like, you're actually good. It's, like... I don't really want to hear from you right now. I know what the problem is here. I know I'm good, and I need you to shut the hell up because you're specifically holding yourself back. So, back off, Yeah, please. you're going out of your way to not go up, but it's, like, kind of a dick. Like, fuck you. Yeah, yeah, so. But overall, this episode is just not very 
good. And I think a lot of it has to do with the cards being played. Like, the guy using, he's using, like, second goblin and giant orc. And it's just, like, I like it when at least the E-heroes are in, either they're playing against a, an opponent that is just so hilariously underpowered that it's great that they can win, like when he duels the monkey, or they're dueling against someone so clearly outclassed them that it's actually a comeback victory in some ways. When it's like this, where it's, like, a second goblin and giant orc, okay. I guess not the greatest so not the breast episode <laughs> end of summary <laughs> nope no. just awful uh, is there anything you the want to say the duel isn't like particularly interesting it really doesn't feed into anything it's just mm-hmm. like Judai's gotta play cards this week yeah it's very much a monster of the week I did like that it's that... not even like a good meme episode either like that's no. it's just not the the funniest thing is that his disguise is wearing a bunch of obelisk blue <laughs> outfits. Uh, his disguise. Yeah, he's wearing a bunch of different cake, like cloaks for yeah. obelisk blue jackets as like a cape. He's kind. He's kind of like a like the <laughs> idea of like a a, a obelisk blue hunter where he's taking all the coats of the people he was beaten <laughs> as he wears it around him. But then a a slight gust of wind is enough to completely blow them all away. <laughs> So it's the world's worst disguise. Yeah, it's it's just bad. It's just not good. No. And then I also like, because they're playing with anti-rules, um, there's a moment where uh, someone says, at the end of the episode, because uh, Kronos is the reason that they're doing it, and they promised that they wouldn't have to do schoolwork if they found the dual giant and basically got rid of him. Um, at the end, they say there was no dual giant. He's like, but what about all the people who lost their cards? Nope, they all have them. And then they reveal, they go back to the Opus Blue guys, and one of them mentions, oh, my rare card is back. The card that he anteed up was a perfect Machine King. And I was like, oh my god, you guys gotta be rocking something better than perfect Machine King. You're killing me here. <laughs> your Opus is blue, and your rarest card is perfect Machine King. At least when Judai put up the Wing Karibo, he made sure to say, this came from Yugi Moto. That automatically makes it better than any card you could... Like, of any rarity, like, yo, this shit came from the King of Games, put that up. Perfect sense. But Perfect <laughs> perfect Machine King wasn't even good when it released. I don't I have no idea why it was an ultra rare. Uh, but yeah, bad episode. Bad episode. <laughs> Mediocre. Yeah, yeah, really not good. No. So let's go on to the next one, which is equally... Actually, there is one bit that I actually really like in this one is called episode 17 nature of the draw or draw 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 which is the japanese name of it dura 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 or nature of the draw i guess they couldn't just call it draw 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 <laughs> even though that's all this episode yeah. is about go ahead zen tell us about this episode huh, huh, so huh. uh <laughs> this is one of the more famous uh meme episodes yeah. in the series um this is the one about the student who flees the school because he sucks at drawing cards. Uh, and he goes and trains in the wilderness to learn how to draw cards better. Um, the uh, The school, for some reason, feeds its students out of uh, like a bin of sandwiches. And some <laughs> of them are like horrifically nasty sandwiches. Um, Give them the and nasty the one, sandwich. The, the, the golden egg witch. Um, that is like the, the main one um, that everyone wants, and it keeps getting stolen by a thief. And it turns out the thief is the Tarzan guy. Um, and so Jaden chases him down to fight him off. Um, and they duel. And this is where GX confirms that drawing cards well is, in fact, uh, a skill. 100%. And I agree with him. Every single time I've ever won with a good top deck, it's because I was skillful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like the exact opposite of skill. Um, (laughs) um, I don't even have that much to say. So, fun fact about this. Um... This episode is referenced in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. Is it? Yes. So if you're playing as the original version of Judai, because there's there's three versions of Judai in Duel Links. There's the original one, 
there's the season four one, and then there is the Supreme King. Um, the original version of Judai, the season one one, uh, if you click on him and you can go through his different like audio line taunts, you know, you can taunt in that game. Mm-hmm. Um, one of his taunts is the egg witch is mine. <laughs> That's pretty funny. The egg witch has actually, strangely enough, gone beyond what you thought. Because this one episode, and I've mentioned, made mention to this before, that there's no real other mention of egg witches after this. But yet, every single GX game always has something to deal with the egg witch. Like the, yes, the, the it's t- in the one that we were playing, Tag Force. Yes, um, Tag, Tag Force has the entire system of like uh, of social linking through uh, through sandwiches. <laughs> And there's various sandwiches, and you can test how good you can draw in them by random chance to get the golden egg, which... Um, and that seems crazy to make an entire mechanic off it based off of a single episode. That is not the most amazing of them all. I will say there is some funny bits, in, but it's only because this episode is so bad that they're funny. Like, um, when they're looking for the guy, um, when they're doing, like, a stakeout... <laughs> when he, they catch him red-handed going for the golden egg witch, they go like, stop him, and then he he grabs a hold of the egg witch cart, and then he fucking slams into the metal gate completely destroying it. Uh, 100%. Yeah, it's... Oh, man. Uh, it's just... The episode's a little funny because it, it's actually it's funnier in English because I don't know if, actually remember if they do this in the Japanese version or not. Um, in the English version, he talks in Tarzan speak uh, until he loses, and then he goes back to talking normally. So he's just been doing it for like no reason. Um, that is funnier. They don't do that in the Japanese one. That's a shame because it's really funny. He does that. Do the... He just uh, decides not to do it anymore when he loses. And then there's like the weird bit at the end where he's just like a nerd with a bowl cut, and he's like, "Yeah, his original design." I I'm was like, back now. <laughs> I thought I was like, "Is this man Samson? They cut his hair, and he lost all his like huge muscles, or is the Ovilus blue outfit so good that it's actually constricting all his huge ass muscles? Because he yeah. should be like humongous. There's no denying how." built this man is. Yeah, he's fucking like shredded. Um and then there's the the ending where they they try to get the gold egg witch and it turns out they don't get it because um Asuka has already gotten it. Yes, which is the callback. Because this is end. back when they were pretending that characters other than like three characters are are valuable duelists. Exactly. Yeah. Which is uh pretty great cuz th- there was at the beginning where she's like I clearly don't care about the golden egg witch it's fine and then at the end she's like no nah, I cared about that shit all along <laughs> I was lying uh yeah yeah not yeah yeah it is a very much a meme, meme episode this does the, the one thing that was actually very good is that this inc- finally I've been waiting over 10 episodes it's it's the return of the Avion gets rocked counter. So we're at, I think, four. At one point, he gets run over by this card that specifically gets attack power from <laughs> returning cards to your deck, which is the most minus thing in the world. Yes. It's just... It's bad, man. It ain't good. It ain't no. good. Um, But I did like to see him kind of... Because it's like at the end of Roger Rabbit. <laughs> When the, when the guy gets hit by his steamroller, he kind of looks like that. Yeah, and he like floats and and like paper. Whee! Yeah, which is very hard to take anything serious after you see that. But I think that was kind of there. I think that kind of tells you how serious they were kind of taking it. They're like, hey, whatever. And then Rottweiler gets hit the same, but it's not as funny if it happens to Rottweiler. No, no Avion's funnier. Yeah, one hundred percent. Avion. Whenever it happens to Avion, it's way funnier. So. That's that episode. Next episode, episode 18, versus Yugi's deck, part one and part two. You can talk about both of them if it's easier for you because they're It's easier. mostly dueling, and we don't really talk about the duel. So, um, Not unless we have there's this student um, who is like a copycat duelist. He somehow 
copies people's decks exactly, even though they're supposed to be really rare cards. Like, he copies Ancient Gear Golem, even though in the beginning they say that it's a legendary rare. Yeah. Um, this guy just has it. And he's not obelisk uh, blue, he's yellow. Yeah, he's a raw yellow. Um, he loses to Cyrus, showing why he's not an obelisk blue. Which um, I've made note, Cyrus cheats. Show cheats in this game. Yeah. There's so, actually a decent amount of cheating in the first three seasons, especially. Jesus. Uh, because I don't I think they power up some cards. Not not just in GX. I'm talking about in, in Dual Monsters, GX, and 5Ds. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, okay, I got you. If you watch Akiza Duel in 5Ds, she cheats like constantly. Like I think almost to the point that the cards in the anime just do different things for her because it's crazy. Fair um, enough. This one, it's actually kind of like a, a ruling dispute. If I was that guy, I would call for a judge. But apparently, all yeah. the dual discs have, um, they automatically can, can detect if you're cheating. So the anti chief software. Oh, is not so they, good. they break the rules? Or they, they turn you off if you break the rules or something? Yeah. Um, so whoever at Kybercorp doesn't understand how Ancient Gear Golem's effect works, which is no trap can be activated at all. That includes the fact that if it's in your hand. So when he declares an attack on Sho's Jetroid, um, he uh, Sho says basically, huh, I can activate this trap. Which at that point you should say, no you can't. No you can't. <laughs> Agent Gear Golem doesn't stop effects. It doesn't stop trap cards um, that are on the field. Yeah, and, and the thing is that Ancient Gear Golem is not an ignition effect you can chain to. No. So it's not like that Sho is chaining the jetroid to it and using it before ancient gear golems thing activates it's just it just activates like you can't you can't do that yeah but then everyone treats it as like show had the greatest uh victory ever which is really funny because he won free magical cylinder which is maybe the most Yu Gi Oh way to win a duel yes <laughs> it's it really is yeah it's but... so funny that like the the obelisk blue guy has fucking reinforcements Mm-hmm. But the 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 Slifer Red has Magical Cylinder. Yeah, and then also the yellow has the main card from Obelisk Blue. <laughs> yeah, it has the, the card from the Obelisk Blue teacher. Yeah. Somehow. So Crazy. rare that Kaiser and Asuka had never seen it before. Ever. Never. Uh, this but this guy has it, it somehow. Yeah. Um, but anyway, he gets his shit wrecked, and everyone's like, oh, you're... You're such a loser because you don't play your own deck. You play copy decks. You'll never be as good. Basically, they're like anti net deckers. Yeah, anti net yeah. deckers. They fucking build your own deck. Yeah. <laughs> they uh. <laughs> you just found this Fluwanderies deck list online <laughs> and didn't even bother to try it out. <laughs> which I say, yes, I did. <laughs> Fuck your adventure. <laughs> You're goddamn right, I did. Goddamn um, right. I don't give a fuck anymore. What do I look like? 13? <laughs> I don't got time for that anymore. Uh, continue on. Sorry. <laughs> um, there is a whole thing in here where they're going to have a showcase of Yugi's deck, which, how do you make that happen? You go to the king of games, you're like, can we look at your fucking deck? Yeah. And we just know. have it for a while? And you know what, um, little the little Yugi, Yugi, who is not the Pharaoh, is totally the kind of guy who would say, "Yeah, sure, I don't see why not." <laughs> I, I'm not using it. Well, I, guess. I just assume he's like a pro duelist, so it's like, how does he go without his cards? Yeah, I don't know. Um, Maybe he has Joey duel for him. <laughs> Have a stand in duel. It's actually a very good question because he only has one copy yeah. of all those cards, so he yeah. just doesn't duel. But Yugi loves. Duel. Also, I think they make a note in this episode that it's his deck, but the god cards were taken out. Which but the god because... cards fell in the in the pit at the end of the original series, so that's yeah, like a I... weird continuity error. I think it might be because that's what Yugi says. Is that I, th- that's what I took it as? Oh, he just I... doesn't tell them. Yeah, because imagine how lambasted he would have gotten if his most three most powerful cards in his entire deck were lost in a chasm and not just that he doesn't have them <laughs> like it's easier to just yeah. say oh i'm not running them than to say i lost them in an egyptian tomb <laughs> well who's gonna believe that if he's like oh the the almighty god cards i took them out uh he could do a <laughs> side deck to those <laughs> yeah i have them in my side deck list <laughs> 
<laughs> the best two out of three format, Yugi's like, let me just side yeah. deck. He's like, oh man, I have to be. Ca-. Then the person's like, oh, he's going to totally side deck in one of the Egyptian cards. I should put in some tech just in case. Everyone's basically side decking, thinking, what if I fight the King of Games? Let me have some anti obelisk, some anti raw, some anti slifer. <laughs> then when he goes in, he's like, I don't know, maybe I'll put in Silent Magician, <laughs> something like that. I don't actually have the god cards. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so they, uh, the, the copycat dude ends up stealing Yugi's deck because he's like, well, I'll be the best if I copy the best. Um, he's got a point there. He I beats see. the shit out of Sho, and then he challenges Judai, and Judai says, if I win, you have to return the deck. Mm-hmm. And then they start dueling, which is the, uh, the start of a duel between... I, I guess they wanted to do it early without actually having him there. The idea of having him duel a Tem without him being there until they eventually figure out. Spoilers by the end for the end of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Yeah. Is that yeah. the final duel is with um, a Tem, but with the actual god cards in the deck. So I guess he's playing a... Well, to be fair, I don't know if that's a nerf version because uh, this version has a, a Chaos Soldier, Envoy of the Beginning, which is better than any of the god cards better than all the god cards yeah, yeah 100%. uh <laughs> uh yeah um it also has instead of magician of black chaos it has dark magician of chaos which is also yeah. way better which which uh, i t- i took notice that they had to be very careful because magician of black chaos's effect is that whatever monster he destroys it's removed from the game so they had to be very sure of whatever monster well, he... that's, that's black magician of chaos's effect Magician of Black Chaos is the shitty ritual one that doesn't do anything. Oh my! The 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 effect one is what I mean. That's the one he yeah, got, right? Yeah, the good one. Yeah, he had, he got. Yeah, no, he has the good he, one. Okay, he has the good one. But that one's effect is basically that if he attacks a monster, he gets removed from the game. So they made sure that he never attacks a elemental hero that would lead to it being destroyed. So when he attacks Bubble Man, it's when he has the Bubble Blaster on. <laughs> I realized that he's like, oh, it's because Jaden really needs his elemental heroes to not be banished. Otherwise, he can't win. <laughs> so I thought that yeah, was pretty... Yeah, think, I think he does destroy a couple, but not any of the fusion ones. No, he doesn't destroy um, any of the big ones. Because I, I think he destroys... Um... Thunder Giant, maybe? Is, is no, that... uh, uh, Blade Edge. Oh, okay, Blade Edge, yeah. I think Blade, Blade Edge is the sacrifice to, to show how OP Dark Magician of Chaos is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And which is funny because I think... Is this the first time Blade Edge has shown up? Uh, I think no, else. I don't think so. I'm not sure, though. I don't remember the first time. Actually, it might be. I think it might be. Which is really funny because he shows up to job, if that's the case. <laughs> It's like, oh yeah, this is the most strongest card in my entire deck, 2600, and then he immediately jobs to a 2800 attack. <laughs> Which is pretty funny. Um, but yeah, the the duel continues on. He summons all... He basically plays the greatest hits, and that's what leads into episode Yeah, he, he just goes through, like, Yugi's famous stuff, and then or, like, powered-up versions of it, like, instead of Black Luster Soldier, he has Envoy at the beginning, etc. Yeah. And then the duel ends, and Jaden wins through it's, using... Well, it's a cliffhanger, also. We oh, gotta yeah. point that out. That it's a fucking two-parter. It is a two-parter. Because, of course, it is. Because Yugi's deck is back, man. This is how they get them. <laughs> this is how they get people back. Also, I don't know if they do this in the Japanese version, either. Because uh, I don't remember. Because I'm not that good at picking out Japanese voice actors just from hearing them, unless it's really obvious, like Joseph or Dio in Gintama. Yep. Um, but in the English version of this... The guy's doing a Dan Green impression. <laughs> he doesn't until um, the next version. He doesn't in the he doesn't do it in the first episode. He does it in the second one because at one point he starts talking about his Karibo and saying like, "Oh, my old friend Karibo, you've given me another chance." And it's like, I think it's show says like, I think he thinks that this is his dad. <laughs> I don't think he because really, he's like, you know, you stole that card. Is like, yeah, all the great times we've had together, Karibo is like, you stole the deck today. <laughs> like you didn't. Uh-huh. <laughs> you don't have any memories with him at all. <laughs> you're, you're talking out your ass. But yeah, it ends on a cliffhanger. So now we'll go into the start of the next one, which is episode 19. Yeah, the duel continues. Um, Judai wins, and they return the deck. Yeah. That's pretty much it. 
Yep. Oh, and then he ends up copying Judai at the end, I think. Yes, which um, is pretty funny. And he, he steals the the pose, and he fucks up the gotcha somehow. Yeah, he does. Um, he goes, gotcha. He goes, he says, like, instead of gotcha, he's like, got ya, or something like that. It's like, very close, but not the same thing. He's like, first of all, the pose is all wrong, and then you gotta go like, gotcha. He's like, gotcha. No, <laughs> you're not doing it right. Doing and I think wrong. doesn't... um. Should I correct him? He does. <laughs> That's how the episode ends. <laughs> With him correcting him. Um, which is also funny because at the beginning of the previous episode, he was afraid of being demoted into Slifer Red. And then in this one, he's fully embraced being Jaden and he wears a Slifer Red uniform. <laughs> so it's, he does, he's not even wearing his right uh, uniform anymore, which is silly. Uh, there is one good bit about this episode that I kind of liked. There's some good moments in here. Um, I really like the introduction of, um, Envoy of the Beginning. I, lo- I think Envoy of the Beginning is one of those cards I've learned to love over time. When I was playing the format at the time, I did not like Envoy of the Beginning because I had to fight tournaments where I did not have Envoy of the Beginning and I fought multiple Chaos decks that even though Chaos Emperor Dragon was banned, you could still use BLS until it was eventually Oh, yeah, I mean, it didn't matter, because BLS was legal, and so was Chaos Sorcerer. Yes, and it took many years for them to eventually go, like, okay, both of them are banned, you can't be trusted with yourself, if you want to play them unbanned, go to the OCG. (laughs) But there's a bit in here where they're talking about the history, and they talk about how there were two cards, because at one point he banishes one light and one dark, he goes, like, what monster does that? And then Masao was, like, there were there's actually two creatures that do that, which is a lie. There's three, as we mentioned. Chaos Sorcerer does that as well. Uh-huh. <laughs> but anyway, he goes to mention they were so powerful. One of them was Chaos Emperor Dragon, who was so powerful he's banned. But they just want you to let you know, name drop Chaos Emperor. He has the same effect, but he's banned because he's too fucking good, which is true. The only reason we have him unbanned is that they had to change his effect because if they, they kept the original effect. There'd be no way to play Chaos Emperor Dragon ever. <laughs> He'd be too good <laughs> in any format you do. Um, but he said the other one is the Black Luster Soldier Envoy of the Beginning, who is in- crazy powerful, which is true. Um, so I really liked when he actually got to summon him and he got to like do shit down, which was cool. Um, there is a running theme here of... So in episode 19, two times Elemental Hero Avion gets rocked. One time, the first time he takes a legit blow from Chaos, uh, um, from Black Cluster Soldier. The second time, Jaden uses a trap card to prevent Berserkers from being destroyed, but it brings back Avion's spirit, and he basically takes on the attack. So it makes it. <laughs> he gets, gets hit on the second time. He gets hit a second time, so he gets taken down second time, and then in the funniest move ever, he brings back Avion, and <laughs> he needs him to summon Flame Wingman. Um, who was summoned earlier in the game, but then he ends up using, I think, a card that lets him copy the last spell card that Yugi used, so he can use the Warrior Returning Alive so he can bring back Flame Wingman into the extra deck. But it was really funny seeing Avion again. It's like, the Avion must be so pissed. that He's like, why do you constantly ask <laughs> me to be your strongest soldier? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have it in me, but he call- he asks so Please much of it. making me fight your hardest battles. <laughs> Yes, and it's like, no, I summon Elemental Hero Avion in defense mode. <laughs> At least he stops summoning him in attack mode, um, which maybe shows that he's improving a little bit. Um, there's a point where Karibo and Wing Karibo fight each other, <laughs> which is really funny, because they're like, oh, uh, yes, let them fight each other, and then Karibo immediately destroys Wing Karibo. <laughs> it's not even like a real fight. <laughs> But it's really funny because Karibo just, like, rams him head first and he just, like, blows up. Oh, uh, it was really good. Um, I did like that he was kind of at the closing... He was basically, like, clearly outmatched every single time, um, which was pretty uh, good. I actually did like seeing Yugi's deck again. Maybe it brought back memories of the previous anime, but kind of seeing him play back, he's like, ah, yeah. His opening move is, of course, Baphomet and fucking Gazelle, the King of Mythical Beasts, because he always did that as his opening move. He always did, and he was I I don't know why, (laughs) but he always dropped Baphomet. And King of Mythical... It's just, like, I fused them. Gazelle, the King of Mythical Beasts. 
And then, and it's so funny because when he reveals, he's like, oh, I destroyed it, but then he got replaced on here. Of course, this is the King of Games duel. Uh, this is the King of Games deck. It's not going to be easy to inflict damage. I was like, okay. When you kind of put it in that way, I guess it kind of makes sense to have monsters on the board, but I was like, yeah, that's still kind of not the greatest move in the world for yeah, somebody who's King of Games. Good. No, no matter what. Games. Yeah, it's still bad. Um, I like this is the beginning of where you mentioned, you warned me of it last week, where Sho gets to see the Dark Magician Girl, and he immediately starts simping for her. And he's like, oh my god, yes. Dark Magician Girl. And she winks it at It continues, him. by the way. It's a running theme, is that every time he sees the Dark, Mag Dark Magician Girl, he like gets a heart on. Yes, or any cute girl creature in general, because he says it for the maiden in love in the next one, and then probably the best bit, Chumley looks at him, like, disgusted. <laughs> like, Yeah, uh, Chumley's like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, he looks at him like, oh, uh, he's like one of those dudes where he's, like, trying to... It's like when you see your friend going too, too far in the joke, and it's going to the point where it's like, listen, man, I... I'm I'm pretty sure when you started this, it was as a joke, but now it feels like you just genuinely really want to have it with this fictional character. <laughs> so please stop yourself. But I, I like that bit right there where he's locking at him. Um, and I also like the bit at the end where there's a running th gag here. Is it because they have Yugi's deck? Everyone just kind of wants to go see the deck. So Judai, Sho, and uh, Chumley. They go all out to go see the deck because they're like, oh, we can see it. Even though Cyrus went out to go get his ticket and everything, he's like, hey, we'll just see it again. But let's go take a sneak peek at the deck. And then they go to Kronos, who's like, oh, thank you, Sir Kronos, for guarding the deck. So now you can just, like, uh, chill. He's like, ah, oh, yes, of course, I will look after it. And then his thought process, as soon as he gets the key, he's like, ah, yes, now I get to see the deck early. <laughs> I get to see it yeah. early, yes. <laughs> Everyone's just all about seeing it. Yeah, and then Masawa shows up, he's like, what are you doing here? I wanted to see the deck. <laughs> and then, at some point, Asuka and Kaiser show up, he's like, what are you guys doing here? We also wanted to see the deck. <laughs> That's so everyone, and then at the end, when everyone saw the game going on between them, it turned out everyone basically, like, Duel Academy had gone out to go see the deck early. To go watch the duel? Yeah. yeah. They, they all went out to go specifically see the deck, noticed that the deck was missing, and then found them dueling each other and decided to be like, well, we're never going to get another chance to look at Yugi's deck actually being used, because that's what they actually wanted, is to actually see the deck. It's it, it, In a certain case, putting a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh cards in a museum and saying, this was the King of Games deck, is silly, because you want to see the deck actually being used. <laughs> You don't actually just want to see, oh, that's the dark. Yeah, edition. you don't want to just look at the cards. No, you want to see it used. So I actually like the ending bit where it revealed that basically everyone on the island just wanted to see the deck play. So they were all wall watching it. So had a nice moment there. Um, but yeah, overall, it's not the greatest. But compared to the previous two, this one was at least in some way. Oh, godsend compared to the others. Yeah. Yes, 100%. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And then, I think, is there anything else specifically that I got here? Uh, just to quickly look at my list. Kind of summon Chimera. Swords of Revealing Light. It really is, like, all the cards he uses are basically, like, a, a, <laughs> a, uh, a Yugi, um, tour of, like, remember this guy? Yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty cool. <laughs> Even they even had Wadapon, which was I think only used in the movie, right? I don't think he ever used Wadapon in the actual anime. Do you remember? The, the, do you he remember? uses Wadapon in, um, fucking the Pyramid of Light. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Is like I, th that's why I was like, that's a good reference because he only used Wadapon once, and it was in the Pyramid of Light because Wadapon was a part of the Pyramid of Light card packs. That's why I remember that. <laughs> So, yeah. Decent enough episode. Do you have anything specific to say about it? No. Um, it's definitely better than the others, just by virtue of the fact that, like, you're getting to see some of Yugi's cards again, so it's, like, a neat little memory lane kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Also, I, it's funny at the end when the guy switches over to Judai, because it's, like, um... It's kind of like a joke about how in, in the, the previous series, you know, all the viewers would idolize and want to be a Tem, and now Judai's kind of the main thing, so everyone, like, he's the new hotness. Yeah, uh, I thought that was a funny little joke. Um, 
it's but also I mean, really, still. yeah. I also did find it funny that they had both pictures of Yugi and Atem. And at no point does anyone realize, how come he looks so different? Because <laughs> there's posters of uh, Yugi as is the regular little little boy form, or as I call him, little Yugi. And then little Atem, Yugi, yeah. which is big man Yugi, who is clearly taller than him and has defining male features and not what little Yugi has. But at no point does anyone ever bring up that they look completely different. Yeah, no one's like, hmm. Hmm. But maybe eventually little Yugi looks like big Yugi. That's well, I think that's what they say implied. in the beginning. Because in the first episode, he bumps into... Um, Yugi. Yugi Yugi. And it's mm-hmm. he looks basically like a Tem shaped. Yeah. Good and close enough for what you need. <laughs> if you were mm-hmm. into that specific look, it's like, damn. Nice of him to grow up there. But anyway, let's move on to the next and final episode for this bit here. The Maiden in Love, or as it's known in the Japanese version, The Maiden in Love is Strong. In quotes. Yeah, boy, this one sucks. Uh, There's a girl who has a crush (laughs) on Kaiser uh, who sneaks into the school. Uh, She duels Jaden. And her deck sucks. It's like a weird anime-only deck that's like about girls falling in love. Funny enough, uh, Maiden in Love was eventually made into a real card. Eventually, but at the time it was not. No, it was not. Um, uh, the only good thing in this episode is the um, canon reference to Spark Lady, <laughs> who does not exist. No, it doesn't. Don't know if that's a thing in... Um, the Japanese version because I don't remember the little jokes. I know also for some reason in the dub version of this episode they age her down like a lot. Really? Um, in she... the Japanese version she's like almost a middle schooler. In the dub they say she's like a second grader. Which, yeah, that's worse. That's much worse. It's way worse. Yeah, it's much worse. It's super weird. That's weird. Um, Wow, okay, good on yeah. you, Japan, somehow? Yeah, I don't know, <laughs> super weird. Um, <laughs> I guess maybe a romance of a woman is better seen when she's a super little girl. Yeah, like, I guess yeah, in a, well, in a kid sense. It's, it's viewed as, like, cute when it's yeah. her saying it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, all, I'm pulling up the list of version differences because these are all pretty funny, I think. Um mm. So, early on, there's a scene where, um, in the Japanese version, Judai asks uh, Ray if they want to take a take bath. A bath. <laughs> yeah. Because that's part. just a thing they do over there. Yeah. Uh, that's totally cut out of the dub. Very funny. Which is really um, funny because eventually when they're d- doing the bath wash, um, they're like, it goes like, ah, yes, wash, wash, back, back. They're, they're generally just having a good old dudes being mm-hmm. dudes time. And then there's Go a later, out time. There's a reveal of when they do the switch that a dugong and a bear are there showering with them. Never brought up again. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, there's a really good joke in the Japanese version where... Judai's like, if they catch you in here going through Kaiser's deck, they're gonna think you're a spy. And then they catch Judai and immediately accuse him of being a spy. Yep. <laughs> really funny. Um, in the dub version, all he says is, you'll get expelled if you're caught in here. Yeah. So it's it, nothing. It's, it is actually funny. I think the big differences are is that I really noticed in the Japanese version, they really kind of set up North Academy and other stuff and like that. Stuff that I never realized. I think they probably cut in the dub version of it. Of like st- stuff to come up later, like they cut all that stuff to make more jokes <laughs> or try to make more jokes. Um, continue on. Um, the in the Japanese version, when Ray drops Kaiser's deck, um, it's his cards. In the dub, because they use the different like card designs, um, they change the cards, but they're completely nonsensical cards. It's like Steam Gyroid and some random trap cards. <laughs> that is funny. Why Why yeah. is he randomly have a Steam Gyroid on him? 
Yeah, it, it was ridiculous. Um, in the Japanese version, they change a lot of the dialogue to be like jokey. So in the original, Asuka talks about like how love is important to um, to women, and how Judai doesn't like get it and then judai kind of jokes that kaiser has met his match and it's a, a little girl in love um kaiser says that he doesn't think that um that, that it should be dueling that reveals your true self and they talk about like the beauty of women has destroyed nations before and shit um <laughs> in the japanese version it's just all of them talking about how they want to like have sex with the maiden in love card and then, um, and then Kaiser, instead of talking about how the beauty of women can topple nations, he all he does is out Cyrus as a dark magician girl fucker. <laughs> <laughs> to Asuka, by the way, he's like, oh. "Did you know that when Cyrus was a kid, he used to say he was gonna go steady with dark magician girl?" <laughs> Maybe the that's a shame they've cut the most uh, <laughs> relatable thing. Maybe Cyrus is better than Sho now that I think about it, because Sho's infatuation in Dark Magician Girl seems creepy, but I think Cyrus might actually feel like, no, I want to make a proper... I'm, I want to do this proper... Yeah, I, wanna, I, wanna, uh, I don't just want to bang the Dark Magician Girl. I want to like raise a family with the Dark Magician Girl. Exactly. I want to live a happy life <laughs> with the Dark Magician Is that so wrong? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> That's really good. Um, then the, I mean, I bet they would have to change so much of this because so much of this episode is them being like, ah, oh, yes, a girl in love is, there's nothing more powerful. Yes. And there's oh, yeah, apparently it's a dumb thing only, um, when Judah uses burst return and when you get that weird scene of burst Stinistrick, burst Stinistrick scolding, um, Avion and Sparkman. Yeah. Because obviously, uh, being a woman. Bristinatrix is immune to the love of another woman, of course. <laughs> and we know, um, I think that they would make a lovely uh, couple I together. I think so, too. Yeah, in the dub version, uh, both of them are, like, guilty about it. And Sparkman says that Spark Woman, if, if Spark Woman finds out, she'll leave him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to think that the, uh, for the very bad episodes, the dub might actually be the way to see. The dub know? is infinitely <laughs> superior for the shit episodes. So we need to do, like, you know how um, Star Trek The Next Generation has, like, a watch order? We need to do a watch order of watch this specific bad episode in the dub, watch this one in the way it was intended. Yeah, the way God intended. Um, exactly. It will improve your... Uh, or even better, let's just do a Japanese dub of the English dub <laughs> so that you can get the better, the more funny <laughs> version of it. Spark Woman. That's yeah, I mean. but they anyway, it's uh, still not a good episode. Still not a good episode. No, but I actually, re this is my favorite episode of the five. <laughs> Just of because... all of them, yeah, probably. Uh, yeah. It has a good enough humor moments. So I will say, we're getting to some quality uh, memes coming up in the next few episodes. Alright. We have that so, to look forward to, at least. Yes, in the next few, we're going to get the Moki Moki episode. Which yes. is an entire episode dedicated to dueling some stoner obelisk blue who's all about Moki Moki. <laughs> um, Perfect. Pretty pretty slamming. Uh, and then we're also going to get the new Manjome arc where he rediscovers himself. I'm looking forward to that. Because it's uh, and actually we're going to end on a two parter, so we may want to go to 26 to finish out the two parter. Yeah. That 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 is what we will do. That make just to make sure because the end of duels we can, we need it. We can't just say the duel ends next episode and save it. So we will gladly do that. Um, also, probably to do a clean break, we should also we would probably be doing the same for the Zane graduation because I think that goes into episode fifty one, which is the official end of season one of Yu Gi Oh GX. So, well, we'll get there when we get there. But yeah. Uh, this episode was, like I said, my favorite one of it. It's all for very dumb reasons. It's for, the, at some point, um, the, when the maiden in love is using her effect, it's those scenes. I do think the dub versions are funnier, because I, I remember thinking, like, oh, it's weird, the Japanese version of the Persona Tricks isn't angry at them, but the dub one, like, lays into them, like, how dare you? 
<laughs> yeah, the dub one's like pissed off and furious. Yeah. It's, it's really funny. It is really good. Uh, I also like that when they're like, their main thing is like heroes shouldn't fall in love. And when they bring them back to the hand, they're like, what did we do? <laughs> Yeah, they're so disappointed in themselves. <laughs> oh man! Oh, they're like looking at this little girl, the maiden in love, in like a wedding outfit, and they're going, "Oh man! Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I don't know." And then Flame Wingman comes out and fucking burns the maiden in love, <laughs> which is really good. <laughs> Complete destruction on that part. Uh, I also did like the end where uh, they reveal, like, "Oh no, she actually really likes." Judai now, and then Ray's like, please wait for me, my love, and then everyone's just like leaving him at the dock saying, you can't leave her behind. You have to stay here. <laughs> they're, they're just like slowly abandoning him to this girl who's completely infatuated with him. He's like, I don't, oh man, I just, I just like dueling. He's like, well, it's too bad now. You're gonna have to take responsibility for this. Uh, so yeah. I can't wait to look forward to, I can't wait to look forward to, I can't wait for the next gra- uh, bunch of episodes i also do like by the way that avion and sparkman do the oh my god <laughs> touching their head thing from yeah Jones. they do <laughs> <laughs> that makes it all the all the better for it if you're gonna see this episode i still would say watch the dub of it i think the dub of it is very much funnier <laughs> it's way funnier. the dub is it. definitely better for the funny episodes it's just way worse for like the serious stuff yeah yes of course because they don't know when to rein it in on that stuff yeah they don't know when to turn it off Exactly. But anyway, that's it for uh, this episode of Shonen Archive. Some very, the maybe the worst batches of episodes we've had so far. Of, in general, of this doing the show. Yeah. It's, yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, it's, if we were ever to do, like, a worst of list, I think most of it would be Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, I don't even think the worst episode of Gintama touches the worst episodes of GX so far. <laughs> like, the power I don't know, man, the pet. The pet competition episode was pretty fucking bad. It was pretty bad, but mm, maybe a discussion to do when we've watched more series. So, we can, <laughs> so it's not just all front loaded with, all oh, right, and uh, episode from season one of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX comes in first, second, third, um, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth and tenth. Who knew? <laughs> Would have never guessed it. But yeah, thank you very much for watching, everyone. We thank, uh, we thank you a whole much for making it this way, if you have. We will see you guys next week. Have a good day. Have a good night. Say goodbye, Zen. And we'll be back next week goodbye, with everybody. episodes... Uh, with episodes 20 through 26. So, goodbye, everyone. Say goodbye again, just to be sure. <laughs> goodbye again, everybody. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much for indulging me on that.